All right, welcome once again into a video format change log for the Web Component Dev Tools. This week I decided to make a short video because I really want to showcase these things live and I have a lot to cover and I will try to keep it as short as possible. So let's get into it. So with the Web Component Dev Tools 0.1.8, which shipped today on Chrome, yesterday on Firefox, we are getting a huge developer experience update. So as the ones that have used the DevTools before, you might know that uh, you had some functionality in the DevTools uh, out of the box. And if you wanted extra functionality, you would want to have a custom element manifest in your web component project, meaning that you would have to use a custom element manifest analyzer, like the one shipped by the great people at uh, OpenWC. Um, and this analyzer would create you a custom elements JSON file, which the DevTools would then analyze for you. Well, from this version onwards, we are shipping the DevTools with this analyzer built in. So that's something I've always wanted to do with the DevTools, was to have everything out of the box without having the developer forced into doing anything that they don't like have to do normally. So they just have to set up the project and get it, get it up and running and the DevTools handles all the rest. So let's see that in action. Uh, I'm showcasing these in webcomponents.dev because I just want to showcase that it is functional on external sites also. So it works in localhost best, but you can use it in external sites also, for example, in webcomponents.dev. So here I have just a starter vanilla HTML object with lit used for rendering. And the normal functionality is here, just press the button and they, it increments or decrements the number. Well, if we were to open the web component dev tools, we would see our counter in the dev tools. And if we press on it, it will now do a small analysis on the page. So it should take only a few seconds, depending on the page. On localhost, it's blazingly fast. On external sites, it's least to do a little bit of more analysis, so it might take a few seconds longer. But after that, it's just just that fast. It analyzes the whole page, and it doesn't need to do that again until you refresh the page again. And in here, we see our properties. But on top of that, we also see the methods of our component. That was something that wasn't in there unless you were using the custom elements manifest. And if we increment our uh, counter, we can see the count property increment and decrement as it should. And also the functions we have here are callable. So we can press on the function buttons, call function, and it just gets called immediately. Uh, what's also cool, what that wasn't there before, is that we are also able to observe events without having any uh, any extra setup. So for example, if our increment method would dispatch a new custom event called counter incremented, incremented. And if we save our file, if we, uh, normally it should refresh, but with web, component, web components dev, it doesn't for, for a reason of iframes and such. But now we can see that the events panel here has counter incremented and if we were to call the function from the button it shows that the counter incremented gets called every time we press the button but for example if we had a component we have, hadn't plugged the increment method into yet we could still call it from our methods panel here so it really makes development faster you don't have to do any boilerplate like attaching an event to a button or calling it from the DevTools console itself. You can just use the methods panel on Web Component DevTools and it just calls the function for you as it would in your regular element. So the context is the same and everything just functions the same. And if we were to attach a event to a decrement also, uh, let's see here, uh, sorry, <laughs> accidentally closed the DevTools there. So if we were to attach it to the decrement also and we were to analyze the page also again let's see here like this let's just wait for a second for it to analyze 
we would see that the uh, well oh yeah <laughs> we didn't rename the function there so yeah now sorry for that uh yeah we see that the counter decremented here also and we can test it out here easily by calling the function from the dev tool so you don't have to attach anything into the uh component itself to test them out you can just call the functions straight up from the from the dev tools and that was something that wasn't there before also if you were were to maybe want to set the attribute of the counter at update we would of course use this.set attribute and we would have a count and we would just set it to this.count uh, then we would of course want to have a observed attributes so it actually triggers something and we would just have the count there if we were to do that and then look at our element again we would see that our attributes pane is here as it should and we can see that our reflection is working completely functional so we don't have to do any any inspection on our dom elements or anything we can just see that our counter is incremented as it should even from the function call buttons so the extra functionality here is that you get actual properties listed here without any hassle you get the attributes listed here without any hassle and also the events and methods are something that is only available with the custom element manifest which is now shipped with the dev tool so everybody gets this functionality out of the box it even works with more complex objects so for example if we had a lit element project we have a typescript lit element project here with the same counter and this is the, just the starter lit element project from web components dev if we were to open it in dev tools we would see our component here and again run a small analysis on the page it just takes a few seconds so you can just take a sip of your water or coffee while you're at it and we can see that our that our counter is visible here we also see that we have some other methods that we have in our component listed here and we can see that we can call the increment and decrement method again and in typescript uh, in lit element if we want to reflect the property we would of course just add a reflect true flag onto our element and if we were to look at our element now we can see that it's reflecting correctly so it's really fast to develop on this and if say you had a more complex object here so we would have a actual object javascript object attached to our web component it would be for example a user and our user would have data like name Let's start with Matsu and, for example, the programming languages that they know. For example, JavaScript and TypeScript. Now, if you were to save the component and look at it in the DevTools, we can see that our user property is already visible in the DevTools. We can see that it's an object. We can go as far into the object as we want. And we can also modify it on the fly. So, for example, we can look at the counter, we can just set it to 5, and it gets set to 5, and it just functions as it should. The reflection works, everything works as it should, as, it, as, as if you changed the property yourself. And for, the, uh, for more complex data, it also is completely functional. So, for example, if we were to uh, write, out our, write out our user data into the DOM, so we would first have the username and then just map through the languages and create uh, list elements from the languages I'm so used to vim bindings that it's difficult to work in this environment so we immediately see them in the dom and we can also see that if we would modify this value here we immediately see it updating in the dom because lit element immediately does the updates and for example, if we wanted to uh, update the array values also, it just gets updated immediately inside of lit element. So it's really fast to test out anything on your components. And um, one nice feature you can also uh, use now due to the analyzer is JavaScript documentation uh, support. So if you, for example, had a JavaScript project, but you had a 
status, uh, for example, a status property that would, of course, be a enum. So there would be like status is like uh, in progress done backlog. Well, in that case, you would just have a string that would have one of these uh, three strings attached to it. And it would maybe update it to the DOM or whatever. And we could maybe put backlog as the default value. Well, if we wanted to update it more effectively from the dev tools, we could uh, just add a small JavaScript documentation here. So we could give it a type and we would make the type be a union type of in progress, done or backlog. And as soon as we save our element, we can see that our status is here listed and it has the backlog value. And we also have a select field here. So we can see all the done, in progress and backlog elements here in the dropdown from which we can immediately change them and they get updated to the element as string variables in real time. So that's really cool. And that's the small fast recap of what the Web Component Dev Tools can do. There's also uh, other functionality that gets shipped with it. For example, if we were to go to a page that I know has uh, inheritance in its components, for example, generic components, we would go to, for example, the list box page. We would see that there's a list box element, and I know that it inherits from mixins and other elements. If we inspect it on our web dev tools, we see that we have a static variable here, and we are informed about it with a static icon here. Also, there are some uh, properties and some methods that get inherited from other uh, elements or uh, from other classes in the code base. Well, we have the inheritance symbol for that and we can immediately see that they are inherited from the batching element. And if there were more layers of inheritance, they would of course be updated also. So I hope this is a good step forwards on making you more effective with web component dev tools and more effective developing web components and i hope you are enjoying the use and if you are tell your colleagues of course because the more users we have the better we can make the dev tools and if you want to join in on the discussion you can join the lit and friends slack channel there's a web component dev tools channel in there which you can join and i gladly answer questions or curious there if needed but that's all for me i'll try to keep it brief let's see how short this is and i hope you get the web component dev tools from the chrome dev store or from the firefox dev store yeah bye